Welcome everyone as we come together here to commit our sister Elizabeth and we obviously gather in the presence in the name of God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. First thing I'm going to do is sprinkle the coffin, Elizabeth's coffin, with the water of baptism, a sign that she was joined to Jesus Christ in her baptism. In the waters of baptism, Elizabeth died. We gather to pray for our sister for God may bring her to everlasting peace and rest. We share the pain of loss, but the promise of eternal life gives us hope. Let us comfort one another as we turn to God in prayer. So in a moment of silence, let's pray for our sister. The first thing I want to thank her for is when I arrived in Ringwood and Fordridge, which five years ago, Elizabeth went out of her way to make me feel at home and welcome. That generous act of love makes all the difference when a priest joins a new parish community, very nervous. But people like Elizabeth put us at our ease and she did do that. And the other thing, of course, vital about Elizabeth was her enthusiasm and commitment as a Catholic. And then I remember well her diagnosis of cancer. I remember coming to give her the sacrament of the sick. In fact, I recorded it. It was on the 8th of March, 2018. I want to thank Elizabeth then for her faith and trust during that illness and the complicated treatment that she underwent. The important thing was the strength of her faith in the face of that difficulty. And that faith and that trust in God, which she surely had, was very heartening for me. And of course it would be a mistake not to mention her work for Missio, the Mill Hill Institute. That's the order which are devoted to missions, spreading the message of Jesus across the world. Well, as you know so well, Elizabeth was a coordinator of the Red Box Appeal. The Red Box Appeal is all about people having a red box in their home so they can make regular contributions to the work of the mission. Well, uh, Elizabeth did that um, for all those years. And 30 years she did it for. And uh, she followed in her mother's footsteps because her mother uh, did the same thing. It was a sign, too, of Elizabeth's wider readiness to spread the message of Christ through the example of her own life, her prayer, her trust, and her respect for those who are searching for meaning in their life and truth. So thank you, Elizabeth. 
So I sprinkled her coffin with holy water, with the water of baptism, a reminder to us that uh, when she was baptised, she was joined to Jesus Christ. In the words of St Paul, she joined Jesus in his death and resurrection, so that during her life she was plunged into the mystery of Christ. She knew in faith that Jesus was with her as she journeyed through that life. And she knew too that eventually when death would come, Jesus would take her into the life of God. That's our belief as Christians. Today, the work of her baptism is complete. We pray that she will be taken by the Lord into the life of God, where she will find fulfilment and peace. Meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul. Present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take into himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her and present her to God the Most High. with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Elizabeth in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So our committal has approached the end and I now give the blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now we go in peace, preparing for the next day to Elizabeth's funeral this afternoon, a funeral, funeral mass. Dorothea McKenna was an Australian poet and writer. She wrote this poem in London in 1904 when feeling homesick for Australia. My country. The love of field and coppice, of green and shaded lanes, of ordered woods and gardens, is running in your veins. Strong love of grey blue distance, brown streams and soft dim skies. I know, but cannot share it. My love is otherwise. 
I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons, I love her jeweled sea. I'm Richard, Elizabeth's husband of 47 years. I've worn her wedding band since 1975. You're all here because you liked and respected my list. So I'll tell you a little about her life. Elizabeth Carrigan was born and raised in New South Wales. She was very close to the family of her friend Lynn, whom she met on her very first day at school. Mr. and Mrs. Park treated Liz as a third daughter and took her with them on holidays in the Blue Mountains and up the New South Wales coast. Her last video call to Lynn was only a few days before she passed away. In 1972, after five years in post, she and her friend Chris took 12 months long service leave and travelled by sea from Sydney to Southampton. She maintained lifelong contact with the friends made on that voyage in a ship called Fair Star. I met her in London in 1972 when she and Chris were working there and living in a bed sick in the same building where my sister was living. When she both went back to Australia, we corresponded for a long time and when she returned a year or so later, we became engaged. She lived with my parents in Yorkshire and worked for some time in Brick House. We married in Sydney in 1975 and came to live in Fordingbridge the following year to be within striking distance of Southampton for my work. Although Liz had endured several heartbreaking events in her life, she was always stoic, <coughs> courageous, uncomplaining, positive and above all cheerful. Her two brothers lost their lives as teenagers in different accidents. She endured and overcame months of treatment for cancer and some serious reconstructive surgery on her face. In hospital, she was always very popular with staff and patients alike because of her interest in them, cheery demeanour, posit positive attitude and not to say a liking for a bit of a chat. <laughs> While she truly enjoyed her friends and family here in England, I know that she missed her. She missed her Aussie family and friends a very great deal. She hankered for the open, sunny, and egalitarian way of life down under. Liz would never entertain the idea of having a British passport, though but she was very loyal to our country. She visited Australia in 2006 for a gathering of the Carrigan clan, some 300 or so descendants of the original migrants to Australia in 1842. Um, two, uh, one Irish, one Scottish. Um, we, we've got a photograph of her at that gathering with her Olympic gold medalist cousin Sarah whom she met there for the first time. 
As the children grew up and circumstances permitted, Elizabeth resumed full-time or part-time unemployment and was employed for a good while by James Hay Pension Administrators in Salisbury. Liz was an avid reader and she liked music, in particular country and western music, which by the way did not have any particular appeal to the rest of the family. <laughs> she used to joke, who am I going to leave, leave all my CDs to? <laughs> but of course, as you will know, Elizabeth's main interest in life was family. She was a devoted mum and nan to two grandchildren. She took great delight in looking after the youngsters, so we remember her taking into the library for story time, and Megan's artwork was nearly always for Nan. She never got the hang of putting air in the car tyres, <laughs> but she was a great person to have around in a real emergency. Major events seemed to bring out the best in her, always incredibly selfless and generous. And tell you, she was so considerate to others, she made me examine my outlook a few times. I'm very, very proud of our three children, model citizens, who are testimony to the mother's devotion. I thank them now for the loving support they've given me and each other in the recent weeks. I've been very fortunate to have had Elizabeth by my side for 46 years, 338 days of marriage. I miss her. I miss her greatly. Thank you all very, very much for coming here today to mark the end of her life with us and to share your love and friendship with a truly wonderful human. Thank you. Thank you.